All right, so we're investing 5,000 buckos. 6% compounded quarterly. How is this one different than the one we did last time? The last one was annual. This is quarterly. What does that mean? What does compounded quarterly mean? Hmm? Every three months, we will compound the interest. Now, what does it mean to compound interest again? Earn the interest, add it to the principal, rinse and repeat. Okay. Remember that within every period, compound interest is just simple interest. Okay. So, now remember last time we had uh, four periods of interest that we were earning. How many periods of interest are we earning this time? Why six? Quarterly. Quarterly, so? One and a half years. One and a half years. How many quarters are there in one and a half years? Six, right? Because there's four quarters in a year. So how many quarters are there in a half of a year? Two. Hence the six. All right, so we need six periods. Oh, boy. Like I said, painful. Period one, period two, period three, period four, period five, and period six. So we have six periods. Note, folks, that the way we're doing this right now is actually also the exact way that compound interest is calculated. This is actually the way the bank does it if you actually invest this. Right. What we're going to learn here in a little bit is the shortcut. Please note that banks cannot use that because that is purely an approximation. All right. So just bear with me. All right. So how much money do we start with in this account? Five thousand bucks. All right. And remember, the interest is always simple. How do we calculate simple interest? PRT. So what's R? So what is it? 0 0.06. 0.06. Good. 6%. Point zero 0.06. What's T? Three over twelve. Why three over twelve, Greg? Because it's a quarter, and so it's three months and a quarter, so we figured it came by the year. Exactly. It's three months, and three months, remember the time always has to be in years, so it's three over twelve years. And what are you going to do with 3 over 12, folks? Make it one quarter. Make it one fourth or one quarter, and hence, that's why they call it quarterly. <laughs> right? I mean, it makes sense, okay? All right, so how much interest do I wind up earning for that first period? So 5,000 times 0 0.06 times 1 quarter, or 0.25 if you will. $75. 75 bucks. What do I do with that 75 bucks? Add it to the principal, and that starts the next. Please note, folks, I can ask you to do this on the test if I wish. If I ask you to calculate compound interest exactly, this is the way you have to do it. The shortcut is only valid if I'm allowing you to be close or approximate. All right? If I ask for exact, this is the way you got to do it. All right? Could you say on the time you would multiply by 0.25 if you wanted to instead of the one quarter? Sure. Okay. I just want to make sure I heard that right. right. Absolutely. All right. So 5,075 to start the next period. What's the rate going to be for the next period? What's the time going to be for the next period? <laughs> the same. And that's the whole point behind this, folks, is that the methodology is going to be rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, and the numbers shouldn't <coughs> change, okay? So how much interest in the second period? Seven, six, 
And here you start to see the interest on the interest, right? The $5,000 every period is going to earn us $75 of interest. Any amount over $75 is just interest on the interest, okay? Now, what do I do with the 7613? Add it back up, rinse, and repeat. So, uh, five, one, five, one, one, three. Note, folks, you're always going to have to be multiplying by rate and time, right? Mm -hmm. You can, if you want, multiply the rate and time right now. What is the rate times the time? What is 0.06 times 0.25? 0.015. Note. All you have to do now, every time, is take this number, multiply by the next number, which is rate and time multiplied together, crank out your interest. Shortens the problem a little bit every step, which makes it a little bit less painful, right? So what is 51, 51, 13 times 0 0.015? 77, 27. 27? Yes. Turn the crank one more time. Oh. 50, 2, 28, 40. Is that right? Yeah. OK. And note, now that we've simplified our multiplication, all we got to do is multiply by 0 0.015. free folks.
if you added up all of these interests, you get the 467.23, but don't do it, okay? Use your knowledge about how investments work, all right? All right, so. So I hope everybody brought their tables today. No. I brought a few extra copies just in case. If you do not have a copy of this, please grab a copy. Monroe folks, did they have any up at the front desk for you? Ah, sweet. So does everybody have one? Anybody have an actual regular copy of the of the handbook? Monroe folks, nobody has a copy other than what I'm giving you. Do we only have three over here? Well, I told them to make two or three because I didn't know how many of you actually had a handbook, so I just I didn't want them to make six or seven when it's forty six pages of. of paper and I'm trying really hard not to be the paper guy, which I have been in the past. You can just go up to the front desk and ask them to make more if you don't mind. Shouldn't take them long to crank a couple more out. All right, so anyways, if you take up your tables, folks, and open up to like the first page or two, what do you notice as you flip through the pages is on the top of every page? A percentage, right? Half a percent, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half. Guess what that percentage is on every page? Compound interest. It's the compound interest rate, okay? The percent on the top of each page is the percent interest earned per period of your investment. All right, so let's go back to that first problem we did. What was the first problem that we did? How much did we invest? 10, invest 10,000 at 6%. Yep. Mm -hmm. Compounded annually for four years? Yep. Okay. Okay, so in essence, what you need to do in order to use these tables, folks, is really do two things. You need two things. Find the correct number in the, in the table. Two things that you need are what page to turn to and what row to look on. Okay? So as you flip through the pages, what do you notice is on the left hand column of every page? Period. Period, period, period. Basically, you need to know how many periods are there in your investment, all right? So for us, well, how much interest are we earning per period? 6% annually. So we're going to turn to the 6% page. Let's turn to 6%. How many periods were in our investment? Four, so we're going to go to row four. And all you have to do is read the number next to it. So what's the table value for this? 1.2625. And the cool thing about it, folks, is that in order to figure out what your future value is, all you need to do is take your investment amount 
and multiply by that number, and then you're done. That's it. To get future value, just multiply P times the table. That's all there is to it, folks. So, we invested $5,000, or no, $10,000, sorry. Times our table entry, 1.2625. What does that equal? $625. How much did we get when we did this problem the long way, the exact way? Uh-huh. When we did it last week, what was our exact value? Twelve thousand six hundred and seven And now you see what I mean by approximate versus exact. Right? If we round the exact amount of money to the nearest dollar, note, we're spot on, right? But we don't get any pennies, okay? The way it works, folks, is that you will always get five digits of accuracy. So the first five numbers of our answer from the table will always be correct. If the real number has more than five digits, we're not going to get those, okay? That's just all there is to it, all right? So note that the table, which you will get to use for every problem in this chapter, is an approximate value, it's okay to get it, okay? But remember, if I ask you to do exact, you've got to do the one period at a time, find the money, add, find the money, add, okay? This approximation kind of morphs all of that stuff together into one step, and that is going to lead to some rounding error, okay? And that's why we don't have the exact number, right? So, note, table value will always be close of instances where it actually will give you the exact answer, but those are very few and very far between, okay? All right, so let's use the table on this problem, okay? going to go to, folks? What's our interest rate? Still at 6%, okay? How many periods did we have? We still had six periods, right? So what's our table value? 1.4185, right? Multiply that number by 5,000. What do you get? 7,092.50. Which is almost exactly the same as what? Uh oh. On, you're on the right track here, right? No, in the other problem, when we had four periods, how long did we invest the money? Annually. We did four years. Does this six represent six years? No. But what we just did was basically the problem for investing for six years compounded annually. 
So the key here is remembering the interest rate earned per period. Folks, we have, oops, I went the wrong way. We have 6%, but what's each period? A quarter. We're going to earn a quarter of our interest every period. So how much interest are we going to earn in one period? If we go four quarters, we'll get the full 6%. But we're only going for one quarter. Because that's one period. How do we figure out what the interest rate is per period if it's per a quarter? Well, it would be I agree, but remember that the 6% is compounded quarterly and it's also on a yearly basis, right? So the quarter is a quarter of a year. So you're on the right track in that you are dividing by, not by 6 though, oh, by, four. by 4. So how much we're earning in each period, folks, is a quarter of our interest. What is a quarter of 6%? One and a half percent. And note, folks, what was that number we were always multiplying by while we were doing the exact problem? One and a half percent, right? This is one and a half percent written as a decimal, right? So that number that you multiply by every time, that's essentially the percentage page that you're going to, right? So this problem, unfortunately, our solution was... Because that's doing it annually. We need to deal with this quarterly. So what page are we really going to go to? Take 6%. And what I try to show to students is that how many quarters are there in a year? Four. Divide by four. And that gives you the percentage that you need to be at. All right? And the other thing that, that I like to sort of show, and again, this is sort of something you guys have already figured out, the periods, remember how many years did we do this for? One and a half years, right? And how did you, how did you know that that was six? What did you do to get six? Four quarters in a year. Four quarters in a year, so you multiplied that one and a half by four, and that gave you the fact that we were working with six periods. And note, folks, this always happens, okay? If you have the percent that you're earning, you will divide by however many times you compound per year. And then if you have your years, you will always multiply by however many times you compound per year to get your periods. And so if you guys turn to page one and a half percent, So on page one and a half percent, row six, what's the table value this time? 3.0934. Does everybody see where that number comes from? Monroe folks, that all makes sense? Yeah? Okay. Multiply that number by the 5,000 that I invested. And now what do I get? Hopefully a number a little bit more. Accurate? Straight up? Yeah. And how close was that to the actual value? 23 cents off. Okay? Again, relatively close. And again, that's good enough for this class. All right? Not too bad? All right, so let's do one now where all we do is the shortcut. That's it. We won't even try. I won't even pretend like I'm going to do the, the long way. All right? All right, so let's suppose that I invest, oh, let's say $7,000 at, let's say, 9% compounded semi annually. 
does that mean? Twice a year. How much interest will I earn in, oh, let's say, uh, 12 years? And this is why I, 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 I'm not even going to pretend like I'm going to do this the long way. Because if we did this the long way, there would be 24 calculations we'd have to do, and that would kind of suck, right? And this is why you use the shortcut, okay? So, the cool part about it is that when you start to use the tables, folks, the tables break down into really two values that you have to, to figure out. What page you're going to go to, and then what row to look at, all right? So what page am I going to go to? What? 9%, but now how many times am I compounding per year? Twice. Twice. So how much interest will I earn in one period? Yeah. Semi-annually will divide you by two, okay? Because in that one period, it's a half a year's worth of interest. A half of 9% gives you the 4.5%. And how many periods will I have? 24, because I've got 12 years and 2 periods per year. Note again, the divided by 2, the times 2. So now you just turn to page 4.5%. And note, folks, I will never ever use, well, that's not true, I will eventually. I very rarely use the actual page that we're on, like the number at the bottom. I almost always use the percent page on top. All right? So what's my table value? 2.8760. Multiply that by my principal. Straight up? Yeah. And is that my answer? No. Why not? Because that's the total. This is the total. Remember, folks, that this gives you the entire amount that you will have at the end of those 12 years. What did I ask for? Interest. Interest. So what do I have to do to get interest? Subtract the 7,000. Yeah, subtract the 7,000 that you started with, right? <laughs> Here's a nice little number, folks, right? If you happen to have $7,000 laying around and you can invest it for 12 years at 9%, you will wind up earning almost twice the amount of money that you invested initially, right? That's nice. And again, folks, how much work did you do to get that money? Yeah, all you did was not spend it. Which, again, is, is sometimes hard work. It's very hard. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, it's really tough to get those investment reports where they tell you, oh, my goodness, you now have, you know, $16,000 in your investment account. You're like, oh. Really want to touch it. Yeah, but you know that it's penalties and fees if you do, and so you can't, and so you don't. And it's like, whew. So you leave it alone, and you just let it grow, right? And the cool part about this, folks, is that the more you leave it in there, yeah, the more interest will earn interest, will earn interest, will earn interest, right? I mean, this is the power of compound interest. Once it starts to get big, it just can't stop, all right? It is fun to watch money turn into more money without you doing anything other than not touching it, okay? All right, so let's try another one. So let's go back to, let's suppose, let's see. So let's suppose I invest, um, try this one. Let's suppose that I invest 
say $50,000 at 6% compounded monthly. Well, there's nothing wrong with compounding money monthly. It happens in a lot of investments, right? How much will I have in, um, let's say, uh, 42 months? Seems weird, right? So, you only need two things. Standard two things that you need. All you have to do is tell me what page am I on and how many periods am I going to have, right? So note, folks, when you're figuring out what page, always start with the interest rate, okay? You still have to start with the percentage. Okay. But the key here is that you have to divide every time by however many periods there are in a year. So when you're compounding monthly, how many periods are there in a year? Twelve. And what's six percent divided by twelve? Point five or one half. And what do you notice is the very first page of the tables? To one half percent. All right, now here's the more fun question. How many periods are there in 42 months? Yeah, 42. Why is it 42? Because it's monthly. So every month you're going to compound the interest. So if you've got 42 months worth of investing, you've got 42 months worth of Periods, all right? The way I will explain it to you You know how many years it is, right? It's 42 over 12 And that's just a number, whatever it is But then what you're going to do is to say Oh, multiply this number by 12 Because there's 12 months per year And so if you have 42 twelfths years To convert it to periods You have to multiply by 12 yeah, uh-huh. If you divide by 12 and multiply by 12, they just cancel. And what are you left with? 42 periods. I mean, it's a, that's a long-winded way to get to the answer of, well, duh, there's 42 months in it, okay? But that is the process that we have been kind of going through, so I want to show you that it still works. It's just really weird, Okay? But it's not wrong. There's nothing bad about that. We still got the 42 periods. It's okay. So, half percent, 42 periods. What's my table value? 1.2330. Multiply by my 50,000. question asked for? Yeah. Yes. Because I didn't ask for interest. I asked how much will I have. The future value, folks, that's how much I will have in the future. That's why we call it future value. Okay? Not too bad? Note, folks, I will not give you any interest rate that does not wind up on the tables. Okay? So I won't give you something like 5% and then tell you that it compounds monthly. Because 5 divided by 12 is not an interest rate on the tables. Okay? You will always have an interest rate that goes to one of the pages on the table. Okay? And this is why 6% is usually my favorite, favorite interest rate. Because that works with monthly, that works with quarterly, that works with semi-annually, and it works with annually. Okay? Don't be surprised if you see 6% frequently. The other one that's relatively common is also 12%, because 12, you can divide by 12, 4, 2, it works as well. 
Okay? So again, any of them work as long as they, after you do this division to figure out how much interest per period, it had better be a number in the tables. Alright? Alright, so not not bad? Okay, so let me see. Um Alright, so so let's suppose that I invest uh, $17,500 at 8% compounded quarterly. folks is that $17,500 that's how much money you can put into your 401k tax free if you slide $17,400 into a 401k that will earn you 8% in 6 years you will earn just a shade over $10,000 of interest on that investment you made 6 years ago one of the things that I do that my wife and I do every month is that as much as we possibly can throw it into the 401k or the 403b or whatever it is, and hide as much money from the tax man as possible, right? So this much, yeah. Since we don't have any kids and we don't have anything to spend money on necessarily other than vacations and going out to dinner, we load our 401ks as much as possible, all right? And earning this interest, that's what keeps us thinking maybe we can retire a little bit early. You know, you're going to have a really good you don't have any kids or anything. You don't have to worry about that. That's the plan. Yeah, I. We, we have some really good friends down in uh, in Brazil who have a, a, a an amazing rooftop apartment, and they just added a spare bedroom on the side. And I'm like, oh, really? Why? So we go for guests. And I was like, sweet. <laughs> and then they, when they put the pool on top of it, I was like. Right, we'll never be in Wisconsin anymore. <laughs> well, no, just not in the winter. Right. So that's yeah, the plan, is, to, is the winter in Brazil and summer in Wisconsin. That, that's the plan. Because in, in Brazil, during our winter, it's, you know, it's like between 90 and 100 down in Brazil. It's not hot. It's their summer because they're in South America. But if there's a pool right there, well, I can just hop in the pool. 
fool if I get hot. Well, anyways, we'll see. Again, the problem, of course, I don't know if you guys know, but Brazil actually elected their version of Trump last week. So it's not going to happen anytime soon for me. I'm guessing that very soon they're not going to like foreigners being there, just like we don't like foreigners being here right now. So, yeah, anyways, bummer. All right, so we can handle all of the basic different compoundings, okay? So, again, please note. You have annually, you have semi-annually, you have quarterly, and you have monthly. We've done one example of each. The idea, again, folks, once a year, twice a year, four times a year, 12 times a year. There are other variations of the theme out there in the real world, folks. You can actually find stuff that compounds bi-weekly or semi-weekly or weekly straight up. We will not deal with any of those, but theoretically they are, they are out there. Now, one that we do have to deal with because it's fairly common is compounding daily. Compounding daily is actually what most banks do on all of their standard savings and checking accounts. Right? I mean, if, you're, if you're earning any interest, it's all going to compound daily. Now, compounding daily, folks, you may be nervous, right? Because how many, how many days are there in a year again, folks? No, most of these things are actually done bankers' days. They do 360. It doesn't make a difference, really. <laughs> The key, though, is that you never actually use that number, okay? When you compound daily, folks, you will use a special table built purely for compounding daily. If you would all turn in your workbooks, your handbooks, to page, and this is the actual page number, 36. table is built specifically to handling compounded daily. Doesn't go below 6%. So note, when I give you a problem that asks for compounding daily, the interest rate will be somewhere between 6 and 10% because that's what's in the table. Okay. If you can find something that pays 6% compounded daily, please let me know because I will start investing in it right now because that's a really nice rate. So you know, if you can find it, please let me know. So if I invest, say whatever, keep it simple, $10,000 at 6.5% uh, compounded daily, for whatever, six years, how much will I have? And so the nice thing about compounding daily folks is you just find the percent, find the years, make those two hit, whatever that number is, that's your table value, multiply. No massage, no tricks, no fancy, just find the number, go, right? So the table value for 6.5% for six years, go down the 6.5% column until you get to six years, there's your number. All right, so if I ask you a question for compound daily interest, you should say, because that's super easy, okay? You just have to remember that it's on page 36. What I tend to tell students is you should really get one of those little sticky note things that you put on that page and look just right on there. 
Compound daily so that you remember this is where you go for compound daily. Great idea, okay? So I had some students who, you know, they had one for you know, compound daily. They were, as we get further along, you'll use this, this set of handbooks for other things. So there'll be other tabs that you can put on there. And the nice part about it, Ben, is once you get the table value, just multiply by your 10,000. And four zeros, four hops. You're going to have $14,769 in six years. So compound daily, you think it's going to be scary, but it turns out it's not. It's just get to the special table on page 36, and you're all good. All right? All right. So, you want a, a mildly tricky one? What if we say no? Then I'll make you a really tricky one. <laughs> All right, so how about I do this one? How about, let's suppose that, uh, that I invest $40,000 at 6% uh, compounded, uh, let's go quarterly. And then let's suppose that after, uh, there's a T there, I swear, after four years, I add another $10,000, which makes sense, right? I mean, if you're investing in something, you probably want to add more to it if you can, because you're thinking more along the lines of this money's going to get taxed if I don't throw it in an investment account. And so when you win a $10,000 scratcher, folks, don't blow it. Invest it. That's right. Put it in an account that's going to pay you 6%, right? Let yourself earn free money. It's so nice to earn free money. Oh. I wish someone would have told me to start earning money when I was 20 instead of 30. I didn't start investing until I was 30, folks. I had $0 to my investment account at 30. But when I finally got you know, the job up at Epic in Madison, then I said, okay, I need to start doing it. We'll do some problems later on so you guys can see how much I actually have in that account. Because I'm not 30 anymore. I'm not 40 anymore either. <laughs> All right, so, but anyway, so let's suppose after four years I had another 10,000. How much is in the account two years after the uh, last investment? I just gotta give him lip, that's all. Old guys always need it, otherwise they get lippier or even. I would think you didn't like me. <laughs> we are still compounding quarter, yes. So how do you First you have to find out the forty thousand, then you find out the ten thousand, then you find out from Might be saying the right like thing. Like your answer that you get from the ten thousand. Okay. Okay. So that's one way of doing it, right? Is look at the money as two separate piles, right? You have to be a little bit careful, careful, right? Because if you invest the forty thousand at six percent quarterly, after four years you add ten, and then there's two more years later. How many years does the forty thousand dollars invest? <coughs> Six. Okay? So one method, and note this is not the only method. Forty thousand dollars for six years plus ten thousand dollars for two years. And then just add the money together. That's a perfectly acceptable way of doing it. What if you did the 40 or the 40 and then 50? That's 
that's another one. All right? Except don't, well, we'll get that, right? Another method. Do $40,000. $40,000 for four years. After you calculate all the interest that gets added to that account, add the $10,000 to that number. Add $10,000 to that value. Then go two more years. But just be careful. Remember that the $40,000 gets all of its interest added into it as well. So it's not, it's not necessarily going to be $50,000. It's going to be $40,000 plus the interest plus the $10,000. That moves forward another two years. And the answers should be relatively close. They won't be the same because of approximations, remember. But they should be close. All right? So which method do you want me to do first? Second one? Okay. So let's do this one first. So the second method. Alright, so we're going to invest $40,000 for four years. What page are we going to go to, folks? 6%. What am I going to do with the 6%? Divide by 4. So what page am I really going to? I'm on the one and a half percent page. Okay? Awesome. Now, how many periods are there going to be? 16. Well, we're just doing the four years, though, right? 16. Do the four years first. So we're going to do 16 periods first. Okay? This will tell us how much money is in that count at the end of four years. So one and a half percent row sixteen. One point two six nine zero. One point two six nine zero. Multiply by my forty thousand. This is how much I have at the end of four years, right? How much I have at the end of four years. So what do I do at the end of the fourth year? Tack on the 10 grand. So now I've got $60,760 invested. And how long is that money going to earn interest? Two years. Two years. So what page am I on? Same page, good. But what row am I going to go to this time, or how many periods? Eight. All right. <laughs> so what's my table value for one and a half? Row 8, 1.1265, multiply by your 60,760 bucks, how much do we have? 68,446 Again, a rough approximation, folks. It'll be close to that number. And again, how much of that is interest? $18,446.14 because I put in $40,000 and $10,000 that's $50,000 difference all interest okay so let's do the other method let's see how close we get Should be close. It won't be exact because we're using slightly different numbers, 
And so the rounding may be a little bit off. It'll be close, but it won't be exactly the same, right? So invest the $40,000 for six years, folks. on the one and a half percent page. What row are you going to use here? How many periods? Here's the 24 periods. What's the table value there? 1.4295. 4295? Correct. Okay. There was six in there. I was like, what? No, no. <laughs> There was a niner in there. Multiply that by my 40000 How much did my $40,000 turn into? $40,000 turns into 50180 Now do the $10,000 for two years. Basically the same values, right? Except now we're only going to use eight periods, right? Two years times four is eight periods. What's my table value this time? Six, five. That sounds familiar. Multiply that by the 10,000. <laughs> Add those two together, what do you get? numbers in my book are exactly the same. Because you did the problem correctly, right? It doesn't matter how you look at the money. You can look at the money as two separate accounts or one single account that you're adding money to. Is there a way that you could bring them? Nope. I'm happy either way. So on the homework, would you do the easy way? Sure. Whichever way you consider to be easy, yes. Alright, so not bad though? All right, now, does anybody know what that three-letter acronym stands for? It's what you see on the end of almost all investment accounts. Yeah, you're on the right track, right? Clearly that none of you, it's clear none of you work in a bank. Annual percentage yield. If you've ever looked at bank rates for investments, so like savings accounts, checking accounts, you know, whatever their sort of like short-term investments that they have, maybe CD, certificates of deposit. Whenever they have a certificate of deposit, they will give you a percentage that's their 2% you know, compounded quarterly or something like that. And then afterwards, they'll give you something called the APY. And the annual percentage yield is something that banks must report to you for all investments that you get. All right? What the APY stands for, this is the percentage of a compound account of a compound account as a simple interest account instead of compound. Basically, what the government discovered, folks, is that we do not in any way, shape, or form understand compound interest. 
as a, as a country. I mean, even a little bit, folks. Even people that leave this class, you, if, if, if this is one of the things you'll forget first, apparently. And so what the banks have been told to do is, hey, whenever you give an interest account that's compounding, which they have to do in order to attract customers, they have to report the APY because the APY is the simple interest rate that they're paid, okay, over one year, all right? So a, a, a sort of shortcut way of doing this equals the simple interest rate over one year. So it's a way for you to figure out, well, what's my simple interest over a year that I'm going to earn on this account? And then you can figure out, well, how much interest will I earn? Because we remember I party, right? We don't remember compound interest, but we remember how to PRT, okay? So, so let's suppose if I invest $8,000 at 6% compounded quarterly. What is my APY? So if you found an account that was paying 6% compounded quarterly, what would the bank tell you the APY is? So folks, we are trying to find the simple interest rate over one year for this account. Quick review. How do you find simple interest rate? Because it's simple, right? But I want to find the rate. So what do you have to do to this equation so that R is by itself? All right, good. So you just need to be able to find these three pieces of information to find what the simple interest rate for this account is. So, what's P, folks? 8,000. What's T, folks? Three over 12 or one quarter. Mm -hmm. You said quarterly. It is compounded quarterly, folks, but what is the simple interest rate over? One year. APY is always one year. The A stands for annual. Okay. So we're going to do this for one full year. The compounding is quarterly. That's important. Mm -hmm. We'll deal with that. But the, the time that the simple interest is going to go is one year. The interest, how do you figure out interest in a compound interest account? What page am I going to go to, folks? 6%. What am I going to do with that 6%? So what page are we really going to go to? How many periods are there going to be? How long are we investing this for? Why for? Because it's one year, and there are four quarters per year, so we're going to have four periods of interest. Don't forget it's one year, right? So what's the table value? 1.0614. Multiply by the 8,000. What is that value again? The future value. What do I need? I just need the interest. So how do you find the interest? Subtract the principal or throw away the A. Uh, 
I is 491.20, boom. We now have calculated the interest that we were going to earn on that compound interest account. Now we need to say, well, if that's how much interest I earned on a simple interest account, what would the interest rate be? So now you can just plug and chug like you did all in back in chapter 10, right? All that you know, straightforward stuff. So what is R equal to? Interest, 491.20, all divided by 8,000 times one, right? Because my P is 8,000 and my time is one year. What is 491.20 divided by 8,000? 0.0614. Remember, that's the decimal approximation. How are you going to write this as a percent? So if you ever have an account that's going to pay you 6% compounded quarterly, the bank will tell you that this account is a 6.14% so that's how much interest you will earn in simple interest every year. Now, that point zero six one four, folks. Does it look familiar? The reason why is that, remember, up here, we're taking our interest and we're dividing by our principal, right? Well, basically over here, we're multiplying by our principal, right? Here's our times 8,000 bucks. If you have a times 8,000 and divide by 8,000, it's the same thing technically. So the idea is that these two numbers are actually always going to be the same. So APY, folks, is almost a joke to find, okay? The book spends page, page and a half going through a couple of examples of what I just did right here. Don't bother, all right? The way you find APY is just look up the table and read the last digits at the end of the table entry, and you're done. So use that to do this. Find APY for an account that earns, let's suppose it earns, um, let's say, oh, we'll just do variation, 8% compounded quarterly. No, I didn't even give you a dollar amount because you don't need it, okay? All you have to do is go to the table, look up the one year's worth of table value for the investment account that you have, and just take the decimal value that's after the number, all right? So technically, folks, what page are we going to go to for this problem? Uh-huh. 8% divided by 4, we're on the 2% page. What row or how many periods? 4. 1 year times 4, 4 periods. What's the table value? 1 point. 0.0824. What's the APY, folks? You are welcome to use that cheat. If I ask you for APY, get the table book up. Stop. Okay? So please, don't go through the rigmarole that we went through right there. It's a good problem because it forces you to re-remember how to do rate given simple interest. That's why I actually do it. But otherwise, that's just silly. Don't do that. Take the shortcut. Be free. Alright? Alright, so... Folks, we have learned how to say, if I invest this much money, 
How do I walk forward in time? When you're a kid, one of the first things you're taught is how to walk forward. Eventually, though, what do they make you do? Who taught you how to walk backwards? It was in kindergarten. Yeah, they actually tested us in kindergarten. If I couldn't walk backwards, then they actually made you have to learn. They actually taught you how in kindergarten. Seriously, folks. No, you're not joking. Yeah, no, uh, uh, yeah. someone who's <coughs> close to my age is conferring. <laughs> I literally had to show them that I knew how to skip, I knew how to gallop, I knew how to, to walk forwards, walk backwards. I also had to be able to do the, the, the elephant walk, right? Walk on four, on all fours. If you couldn't do that, then they, they considered you to be behind in physical development, and they forced you to a special physical development class. <laughs> It was just the first couple of weeks of, of class. I mean, there were like six kids that didn't know how yet, or didn't know how to explain it, right? So if they said, walk backwards, they were like, what do you mean? Well, they're like, walk backwards. And they said, okay. So they, they turn around and walk forwards the other direction. And the guy's like, no, walk backwards. The kid didn't understand. And so they said, oh, okay, you're going to go off into this special class for a little while, and they'll teach you how to walk backwards. And they, they were teaching us how to gallop, right? So you know how to do this, and you know how to skip. Right? So, I mean, again, this is all learning syncopation, right? It's all teaching you how to do rhythm. And so they were prepping us to do musical rhythm in our later careers, right? I mean, so one of the reasons that I have rhythm is that in kindergarten I was forced to skip and gallop and do all these other things. I mean, that's a waste of time. Yeah. Are you crazy? That's great. Yeah. You should see me on the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, how do we go backwards? We are still on compound interest, but now we're going compound interest in reverse. And here are the types of questions that you get when you're trying to go backwards, all right? I need $5,000 in five years. I have an account that pays, uh, let's suppose it pays well, we've been doing that one too much. Let's say it pays 4% compounded quarterly. How much do I have to invest now so that I'll have $5,000 in five years? How much do I need to invest in five years. So here is the type of question that's asking you to walk backwards. You know you're going to need a certain amount of money in the future. So you're looking at your roof and you're, the guy who, who comes in and does your home inspection when you're buying a new house says, hey, you're going to need a new roof in seven years. And you say, well, really? How much does a new roof cost? And the guy says, usually for that kind of a roof, $15,000. And so you say to yourself, okay, when I buy this house, I need to make sure that I have enough money that I can invest somewhere so that in seven years, I have enough money to buy a new roof without having to borrow money. Because when you borrow money, what do you have to do? You pay interest. Whereas if you invest money, you earn interest, right? So this folks, is a backwards problem. And the best part about this, folks, use the next column in the table. And basically what we're trying to do is to take the future value that we want, $5,000, and get back to the present, right? That's what we're trying to do, and that, that our second column in our table is 12-3. That's how you take a future value and bring it back to the present. Right? And, and that really should have been the name of the movie. Not Back to the Future, but Back to the Present, right? Because that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to get back to where he started, which was the present, not to the future. It doesn't make any sense to get back to the future. 
that means that you went to the future, came back, and now you have to go back to it, right? That doesn't make any sense. The guy was trying to get back to the present, which is exactly what we're trying to do with that second column. All right, so how would we go about doing this problem? The cool thing, folks, is that using that column in the table is exactly the same as using the first one. So guess what page I go to for this problem? Why 1%, right? Uh huh. All of the mechanics, folks, are exactly the same. How many periods am I going to earn interest in this investment? Why? Yeah, uh huh. Because it's five years and I'm going to earn four quarters of interest, so I'm going to have 20 periods. But now you just use the second column instead of the first. So, okay, folks, there's really three things that you have to do in order to make sure that you do all of the problems in this chapter correctly. You have to tell me which column you're using, which table, 12-1 or 12-3, and then what page and what period. Every problem in the book, for the most part, just does that. Okay? So, what's the table value? Note this number is less than 1, therefore when you multiply by 5,000 you are going to get a smaller number, and that makes sense, right? Because if you invest a smaller amount, it can then grow up to 5,000, okay? Hmm? Or did I say 5,000? Yeah, okay. So how much do I need to invest? So if I just have a shade over 4,000 bucks, I can throw it into this account, and in five years it'll turn into 5,000 bucks, okay? So this is how you walk backwards, where you take a future value and bring it back to the present. And again, that's why they title the column present value. It's how you take the future and come back to the present, all right? So, really quickly, I invest $4,097.50 for five years at 4% compounded quarterly. How much will I have? What am I doing here, folks? The same thing when you're going into column one. So you're taking that, going into 1%, going down 20th row in column one, or 23, excuse me, and multiplying it. So note, this is a regular walking forward problem, right? Mm -hmm. Going back to saying, OK, how do I walk forward? And again, note, this 4,097.50, I chose that number very specifically, right? Because it was the number we needed in the other problem, right? So the page, 4% divided by 4 is 1%. The row, 5 years times 4, 20 periods. What's my table value? 1.2202. Multiply by the 4,097.50, and what did you get, guys? 49.99.77. Yeah. Does 
Does that number make sense? Why does it make sense? Because it does. <laughs> because if you went backwards, you should be able to go forwards, and you should be right to the same number. Exactly, folks. What this is known as doing right here is checking, checking. your answer. Okay? Column one and column three check each other. If you move forwards a certain distance and then move backwards the same distance, you should pretty much be right back where you started. Note, we started this whole problem at 5,000. We ended up at very close to 5,000. That makes sense. So when the homework asks you to check your answer, this is what it's asking you to do. Use the other column to check to see if you come back to where you started. Okay? All right. So that is the end of chapter 12. Basically, it's using those two columns that you work with where you're investing a certain amount of money. Two, two, thirty, the evens for Thursday or Tuesday of next week if you wait that long. These shouldn't be too bad, I hope. Again, spend some time on them. Don't waste the last minute like always. All right?